I have no idea what I'm going to talk about in this video, but we're just going to roll with it. Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to my channel. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Jasmine, and I make all types of like lifestyle videos. So if you aren't already following me, go ahead and subscribe, and I'll leave my social media right here. So today I wanted to do an update for you all because I know that a lot of people are still commenting on the new grad update that I posted kind of a while back. I think that was back in November, beginning of December. And since then, a lot has changed. Um, my new grad program, just to give you like an overview of it, um, that was like week six or seven. For those of you who don't know, I'm um, a new grad in the ER. So our specific unit has 12 weeks versus um, telemetry was like eight weeks and like LMD was like 16 weeks. And then I believe ICU was also 12 weeks. I don't really know the other ones because I didn't really talk to that many people from like surgical. And be I believe they're also eight weeks, but don't quote me. It depends on every program. Specific program was 12 weeks. Now for that video that I posted, I was like on week six or seven. So now I am officially done with my orientation and I'm like on to uh, like being on my own actually, which is like kind of hard. <laughs> I'm on week three of being on my own and it's just like way different. Um, I think the hardest thing was during my orientation. I know it sounds like I was ha having such a hard time adjusting, especially because I was on nights. And I still am on nights, but I was sick and the flu season hit pretty early for us. Um, that's why I got sick. But I felt like a lot of the time during my orientation, there were a lot of cases that were very like minor, such as like abdominal pain or headache. Those are like common ones that people come in for. And they're just very basic cases that get discharged and get sent home. Versus now, I remember the last shift I worked was I had so many new things that I had never been exposed to during orientation. For example, like when my patient was on BiPAP, I didn't know what to do when I had to transport them to the next or transfer them to the next unit, which made me feel like an idiot because obviously it's not that hard. I was having so many issues with it because I was like, I have no idea what to do. Like, do I have to fix the BiPAP machine? Do I have to take them off? And like, yeah. Hardest thing about orientation is you never know what you're going to get and you just kind of get whatever you get and I have never had to use anything other than a nasal cannula on orientation so for me to have someone like on a non breather on BiPAP on things like that it was like I've had them when I was in the ICU when I was precepting there but never when I was orienting in the ER so I felt like stupid like I just don't know like those things and I guess people probably think that I'm stupid too because of the fact that like I didn't know just like basic things. <sighs> I think I'm adjusting to the whole night shift time difference a little bit better than I did in the very beginning. Like I think that's because I was on like week 7 and when I filmed that video and my melatonin stopped working so I wasn't sleeping anymore. But yeah, um, another thing that's really helped me personally is like doing yoga before and after my shifts. Like, I don't know if I expressed it like during that video, but I've been having like a lot of anxiety about going into shift, during shift, after shift. So doing yoga helps me get that like release and helps ease that anxiety. I really wanted to film a video of like my own flow that I do at home when I don't have the chance to go to studios and that's what helps me like relax and just like cope. <laughs> Got these like blackout curtains. I'm gonna make this whole video on like things that help me f during my night shift because um, I wasn't very accustomed to it working three days of night shift. I've only ever done like two and one like this week I'm doing two and two so I don't really know what feels like to work three. I was like dying on my second one this week already. So, uh, I don't know. The thing is like, I feel like there's so much to learn and for us to be expected to know everything at 12 weeks is kind of insane. Like everyone's been really supportive and been able to like 
help me out whenever they know that I'm like overwhelmed. Sometimes it can just get hard and like there's nothing you can really do about it. Take things one at a time. I think like the biggest thing that I think about when I'm like having so many things at a time, like I can only do one thing at a time. I'm not 30 people. I know that like you need this and this now, but I have to do this and this right now. So I'll get to it when I'm done doing X, Y, and Z. They're stable. I'm not in a rush to, I'm not in a rush to do everything because I'm not gonna stress out over someone who has a headache and just needs a lot to draw on. Yes, it's like the ER, we're supposed to go fast and everything, but at the end of the day, if I rush myself and I like miss their IV, it's only gonna take me more time, so I'd rather just not like freak out about it. <sighs> and then something that everyone's been emphasizing in the comments and in real life is just know when you're drowning and ask for help. And everyone emphasized that, but I'm always willing, like, I'm not ashamed to like ask for help. I never expect myself to be the type of person to catch on super, super fast and be like this amazing nurse right off the bat because the reality is I don't have any ER, ER experience other than sitting for people who were suicidal hard sometimes because I feel like the expectations for us are so high. Nobody is going to be like that great right off the bat. And then I picked my first overtime shift up which I was like kind of down for because I picked it up on a Monday and for us st statistically and historically I guess Mondays are the most busy and I usually work Mondays anyway so I was like oh whatever but the last two Mondays weren't that bad so I was like oh it's not gonna be that bad and it wasn't terrible but I just felt like everyone is super sick and because we just got off orientation during the flu season it's like so much harder than it was when you're actually just orienting with our preceptors so that makes it a little bit harder than I expected, but everyone is, well I shouldn't say everyone, but most people are like really supportive and are like approachable about things, so I am usually not afraid to ask for when I don't feel comfortable. That's the update with that, I am trying to, um, by Alex's Valentine's gift. Maybe I should look through the comments and see what people are saying and kind of address everything since then. A lot of people were saying that like my preceptor was bad and it sounds like I don't have a preceptor, but I'm not even gonna lie, I was kind of whiny in that video, but it was kind of just like, I felt like it was falling apart and there's nothing I could do about it. And the thing with me is like, I expect myself to catch on to things super fast and I just wasn't, so it was driving me crazy that the fact that, like, I wasn't as great as everyone else was. It's hard, but obviously every first year nurse will say their job is hard. And if they aren't saying it's hard, they're lying or they're going, they're crazy. Because it's going to be hard your first year. You can't expect to be, like, amazing right off the bat. And if someone tells you they expect you to be, it's shows more about their character than your own. Okay. Wow, you guys commented a lot. I didn't know that there were like 44 comments on this video. I had to read that like literally people are like, oh, you're not alone. Oh my God. Okay, so like from the very beginning when I was talking about IVs, I should have watched the video over to see what I said. But when I started talking about IVs, I drew, IVs week seven for me were still freaking awful. But a lot of people were saying, and even like, um, like management was saying that we should like go to more training and do all this stuff. And honestly, the only thing that I can say is the only way to get good at IVs are literally just doing it. Because you could watch all the videos. I was watching all these videos, doing all these things, blah, 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 thinking that it would help me get better and literally it wasn't helping and that's why I was getting so frustrated because you can read all these books and do all these things but until you actually physically do it, there's no way that you're gonna get better at it. So for me to do IVs, I finally got better at it around probably like week, like literally week 10, like near the end, the very end, maybe week 11 or 12. <sighs> And like, no, I don't, I still don't feel comfortable being on my own and and I probably won't for a while. And a lot of people say it's not until like month eight until you actually don't feel as anxious. 
but I do feel better about IVs. I think the biggest thing was learning how to float the catheter in, which I know there's like some research that says all these things about it, but every time that I floated it, I usually don't have an issue with it. Um, if you don't know what floating it in is, okay, let me try to explain this. I wish that I actually had the needle, but I never bring this home anymore. Um, so let's say like usually in this spot, there's a lot of like arteries around here. So when you like advance the catheter, you'll get flash and then you'll feel like resistance. So when you see flash, usually what you can do is um, just take the needle out and lay the catheter in and then just hold pressure obviously so the blood doesn't go gushing out and then a screw on the little, um... oh my god, what that, what's that thing called, the in between, whatever, the attachment on and then what you can do is, this will work better this usually works better if you only need the IV and you don't need blood draw. Um, just screw on the thing, push some saline in, and as long as there's no like infiltration, you can just like simultaneously push. Oh, sorry, I just ate. Simultaneously push the flush, push the saline, and then kind of like I don't even know how to say it. Shimmy the catheter in. And that usually will work. Um, it's really good so that you don't have to poke them a million times. And I've noticed it's like saved me a shit ton of time. Because I would poke people like four times. And I would like get flashed and I'd be like, what the hell? Like, well, what am I supposed to do now? So what i do is I'd just take it out and I'd just restart it. But most of the time you can save it if you can get flash. And as long as you get flash, you're usually able to float it. And some research says that blah 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 is not good for you, whatever, I don't even know. I don't know what the evidence-based practice shows, but every time that I've like removed the IV and I look at the catheter, it's like completely intact and it's fine. So until I see evidence-based practice that proves it against it, then I'm gonna keep doing it because it works and it gets patients in and out of there a lot faster when I do that. Um, I did have also like a code Amy, which is actually not as bad as you expect it to be because most of the time you, um, have a lot of help. So you get like two lines, usually you want to use the 18 gauge because in case they need to, um, infuse anything or have any gut die, you need an EKG, um, get them like shaved down in their groin. And usually like techs will help you with that, other nurses will help you with IVs, and then pretty much from there on, I'm pretty sure I'm missing something. You'll give them like aspirin or um, something for pain, and then after that they're pretty much shipped and sent off to the cath lab. Also, I haven't, I did film when I went to the cath lab for a day. Um, if you still want to see that video, I might post it. Comment down below if you actually are interested in seeing it. It's a vlogmas video that I never posted, but I talk a lot about what I saw in the cath lab, so I might post that one. It's going to be weird though because I'm going to start talking like it's vlogmas, but it's like probably be, probably going to be like February. But yeah, if you have any other questions about anything, let me know. Um, I just want to let everyone know that literally if you're like a new nurse like me and you're struggling, um, it'll get better over time. How is my life post-grad? It's probably a lot better. Like, I have anxiety about tests and stuff, but nothing compares to the anxiety of taking care of like a real person. Because when you get it wrong on the test, like boo-hoo, you get a C or whatever. <sighs> But you get it wrong in real life, you can like really do some damage. But yeah, that's how my new grad experience is going. Um, hopefully by the next update that I'll actually feel more confident about what I'm doing and I don't feel like a dumbass all the time. Um, I'm also going to post my socials here or down below. And if you have any questions, let me know. I know a lot of people are graduating, so congrats to everyone who's graduating. Welcome to uh, hell. Just kidding. I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys in the next update or the next vlog. Mm -hmm.